How do I feel when my website and applications come under attack? Thanks to Newstar Security, I feel confident. Their full ultra-secure suite of always-on cloud security services enables me to be confident that our website will always be available to our customers whenever they need it. Newstar Security does more than ensure my company's online presence is ultra-secure. It ensures my peace of mind. Newstar Security. Always on. Ultra-secure. Welcome to the Oh Hell No podcast, where I, Keisha Nicole, delivers a daily dose of passion, purpose, and struggle by interviewing people who are living their best life doing what they love. Here on this podcast, every Oh Hell No moment serves a purpose. Now let's get started with the show. Welcome to another episode of the Oh Hell No podcast. Today I have Jamila Bannister all the way from Trinidad and Tobago. Hi, <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good, good, good. This fine. Is it Wednesday? Wednesday evening? <laughs> yes. Jamila is the managing director of J Bannister Branding LTD, which is a personal mm-hmm. branding and digital marketing agency. Yes. Yes. I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's worked in communication, PR, and branding since 2007, so she has a lot of experience, and today she is going to share some gems with us and just talk a little bit about her journey. So again, welcome to the podcast. It's very nice to have you. Yeah, great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really looking forward to this discussion. Yes. So marketing is a tough and oversaturated field. When did you realize that you had the talent in this field to pursue it as a full-time career? When did I realize? Um, as soon as I decided that I wanted to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the interesting thing about this is I, I started off in 2007. I started off as an intern, a very young grasshopper in the game. And um, during that time, I was studying communications at university. Now, if I'm being honest, even though I was studying communications at university, I really didn't have any idea what I wanted to do. But, you know, the natural path, if you're studying communications, you might as well get into marketing communication. So that's what I did. Mm. So, so I did that for a period of time. And, uh, and to be honest, you know, you take your time and you develop uh, your passion over, over the years and over time. As time passed and I would have gone from job to job. Um, within the last five years, I'd say I really have found that I really do love helping people and I love to see people achieve their fullest potential. I think one of the most disappointing things for me is to see unfulfilled potential by amazing people. And I never realized how much that bothered me until, uh, now, now that I'm doing personal branding and I look back on people who, even when I went to school with them at secondary school level or a university level, and I'm saying this person is so talented, so brilliant, so bright, but they just sat on their goal. It's like, you know, their goal was in a crate and they just sat on it. They never even bothered to look inside, you know? So I guess this is a matter of self-discovery. And in, in that self-discovery journey, I realized that my purpose really was to help people accomplish their purpose. Nice. So the fact that you've been in this industry for a while, what would you say are certain skill sets that a person needs to have to be successful in the marketing profession? I'd say that uh, somebody needs to be extremely flexible and they also need to be quick on their feet and they also need to be extremely, extremely personable. This is an industry where you really have to get to know people and understand how they think on a very intimate level. And if you can't build relationships with people, uh, actually see your work in motion, it will be very difficult for you to function. So I'm not saying that you have to be an extrovert and you have to be the life of the party all the time, but you should have a personality that's easy to assimilate into new environments, um, a personality that's easy to speak with, easy to talk to, easy to relate to, because ultimately what a consumer wants is that they want uh, brands or they want a personal brand, an expert to understand their issue and provide them with a solution. So you really need to be somebody who is good at building relationships, somebody who's very personable and somebody who is able to understand things quickly and understand that with people, things change really quickly. So you have to be flexible. It can't be too rigid and just be open and honest and understand that 
change is something that's really, really present in this type of job. Love it. So while pursuing your passion in this field, what do you think sets you apart from all the other companies that specialize in branding? Well, for me, I, I really do take everything that a client does it really their success is my success. I think I, I think sometimes I'm a little too close to it. <laughs> um, but I really do feel like I put all my all of my energy into helping people and to um, helping them pursue what they would like to pursue. So it's not just you are not just another client on the on the ticket or you're not just somebody who um, who would come in as another number. So for me, that's really important. And what I do is I, I take my experience, not just from um, branding, but PR. And because my first degree was in human communication. So that really was um, interacting and communicating one-on-one, one-to-many, and understanding communication on a psychological level, body language, a non-verbal communication. Uh, a lot of personal branding experts um, tend to have a focus in terms of they focus on PR or they focus on imagery, but I try to look at the person as an as a holistic type of in a holistic type of way. So I, I say I focus on the three C's. I focus on confidence, which is you as an individual. I focus on content, which is your presence online, and I focus on communication, your ability to engage with other people face to face, offline, and build relationships with them. So you should be able to master all three in order to really um, have your brand proliferate at a, at an exponential rate. Nice. So you live in the Caribbean. What are some challenges you faced when starting a business like this and also sustaining a business like this? Well, in terms of starting a business like this, and it's not like the challenges aren't there anymore. They're still very much present. Um, but I'd say that from a cultural point of view, we are now getting to the stage where we are okay with talking about ourselves in a way um, that's loud and proud, and we don't feel, quote-unquote, weird about it. Um, I think our culture very much um, preaches modesty, and we don't want to be too front and center. You know, as children, we always told to be quiet and to, you know, mm-hmm. you are seen and not heard and that type of thing. Yeah. You know, which is very different to what... Um, U.S. culture, U.K. culture, Canadian culture is, you know, if you have something to say, you get up in front of that mic and you say that thing and you contribute to the illumination of everybody in the room. But um, by and large, our culture doesn't really promote that. And I think a lot of CEOs and a lot of business leaders have made their way without having to do things like personal branding, without having to take advantage of digital system. So it's a cultural shift mentally that um, I have had to deal with because I've been preaching personal branding for a while. I actually saw a LinkedIn note that I wrote in 2014 about personal branding and I honestly couldn't even remember writing it, but that was like six years ago. Um, And between then and now, digital has changed a lot of things in a drastic way. Uh, So it's kind of getting people comfortable with being their fullest self in front of an audience. Mm. And uh, what was the next part of your question? (laughs) And sustaining your business, just keeping it going while you're living in the Caribbean, getting clients that are maybe not in the Caribbean, but, you know, you can reach out and help others. Right. So sustaining the business certainly is, uh, well, at least for me, is having a, a steady flow of clients that you can reach out to, but it also means that you have to prove yourself because once you start to compete in the global marketplace, it's not like you're on an island with, you know, one million people, right? You're actually in a place where you're dealing with hundreds of millions of people and you're dealing with lots and lots and lots of professionals. So you really have to um, prove yourself every single day. You really have to put yourself out there. And it is a... It's a, it's a slower build, at least in my experience and from my observation. Maybe this is completely ad hoc or completely, like, you know, anecdotal. But even from a growth point of view online, the growth doesn't happen as quickly in the Caribbean for, for, for us online. For somebody, I, I've seen people exponentially grow their YouTube channel or grow um, a podcast following who's in the States in a year. 
But I have been doing this for a while. And granted, okay, maybe I should have been more consistent. Okay, take that, take that. <laughs> but at the same time, um, <clears throat> I still find the growth, the growth rate to be slower than in the developed world. It's just an observation of mine. But in terms of sticking with it, I will continue to stick with it and continue to preach my message of personal branding being the most um, lucrative path somebody could take to, to, to turning their life into a money-making machine. You don't need anybody's permission. You don't need any. You don't need anybody to do anything for you because you're leveraging your best asset, which is yourself. So from a sustainability point of view, I would say that. Um, but other than that, we just deal with the same challenges everybody deals with in terms of business development. So what growth have you seen in the Caribbean for online businesses over the years? Um, well, in the last couple of years, for sure, um, there certainly has been an uptick in the amount of people who are using digital media more, more strategically. Uh, I'd say prior to 2016, uh, a lot of businesses were really focused on having a Facebook front, and that was it. You know, It wasn't anything more in-depth. I even worked at a company that had a, had, a, had a pretty sizable marketing budget, and they made a decision not to um, generate leads using social media and not to actually build that entire ecosystem with digital media on the front. So I'd say within the last couple of years, things have really changed and really developed. More people are really interested in knowing what is required for them to build up properly functioning websites. Uh, more people are interested in understanding how to leverage content to bring more customers into their business. So I, I'd say that we are slowly getting it. We are slowly understanding it. You know, information is more out there, and there are more persons who are using leveraging platforms like LinkedIn, leveraging platforms like uh, Instagram, and Facebook, and even Pinterest to be able to get their get themselves out there, get their name out there, get their business out there, and recognize that these things are actually channels just like traditional channels would be to bring in to bring customers into you or to bring attention to you these things function in quite the same way you just have to understand how to leverage them yeah absolutely because i even yeah. see people in the caribbean downloading my podcast and i'm like oh that's amazing that's great so yeah 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 we've, we've become quite the podcast the nation to be honest <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay finish this sentence for me don't get into marketing if if you don't like to be stressed out if you don't like to be challenged i just say if you don't like to be challenged okay. if you don't like to be challenged all right i think that may be a better thing to say so replicating people's marketing plan that seems to be something that i see being sold a lot on social media what are mm -hmm. your thoughts personally about that type of i don't know strategy yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so i am somebody who is for inspiration but not duplication girl say it again please <laughs> come again come again <laughs> <laughs> inspiration not duplication so so in all of my readings and you know getting more familiar with digital marketing a lot of a lot of the big names in digital marketing will always tell you if something is working look to see how you can adapt it for your own business i mean if something is broke don't fix it right mm -hmm. but there's a clear difference with um ripping off somebody's thing completely and you taking an idea and adapting it to something that works for you in a way that facilitates yourself and your and your customers, and I could I could have because a lot of a lot of things that we a lot of innovations that we experience now are new versions of old things, right? From the from the telephone, it was a phone on the wall with this line, and then it developed into something else, and then mobile phones, and then iPhones, and then Androids, and we have all sorts of things now. And even if you look at the listening devices from this month and walk months to iPods and you know people have these these things in the air, it's just a headphone. So a lot of things are innovations and things that were there before, but there's a clear difference when you come and you rip somebody's thing off. And as a creative, it's very frustrating when that happens because you spend so many nights, I know, I've been there up late, two, three o'clock in the morning, recording whatever you have to record or writing or or, or, or ideating about something, and then somebody who was too lazy to do it on their own, or too inept to sit and think about it, or too indisciplined, rips your thing off. 
you know so and that's why building a brand is so important because it really helps you distinguish yourself from others in the market so that when people see your thing or they hear a certain thing or they see a particular type of text or copy they know it's uniquely you so one of the best ways that you could protect yourself from people who like to copy and be copycats is to really create a distinctive brand a distinctive talk track for yourself a distinctive way of doing things a distinctive way of visually representing things so people know beyond the shadow of a doubt, of a doubt that this is you okay so i love that answer and that answered one question but i think maybe i asked this the wrong way so a lot of sometimes there are people who they do certain things and they experience certain successes in their business by whatever it was that they were doing. And now they mm. want to turn this into a money maker. So they tell people, come to my class and I'll teach you how to do exactly what I did. And you'll be mm. able to make six figures in two months or whatever mm. it is. Mm -hmm. As a marketing professional, do you feel like that is always going to be the case? Like, copying someone's blueprint for maybe selling something or go how to like oh if you if you do what I did you'll build up your followers on Instagram and you'll be able to you know do this and do that do you always believe those people that are selling that story no yes and no yes if you say it happened for you unless I could see your books and to prove that the accounts actually measure up because you know men lie women lie but numbers don't lie right mm -hmm. so unless i could see those numbers i would give you i would say okay if you say you made that no problem but i need to see some level of evidence that 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 did in fact happen now when it comes to promising me six figures um i don't believe in that because i believe that there's no short path to success i do not believe that any formula, unless you win the lotto, I guess, or unless you come from some sort of rich family, mm -hmm. there is no short path to actually get going from zero to six figures. The level of growth you have to experience personally, the level of growth you have to experience professionally, the level of development you have, the, the amount of mistakes you have to make to get to that, to get to that figure, there's no way you can circumvent the process of growth and development. That is a truly 100% organic process. So I could show you the blueprint of what I did, but what you need to tell me is how long did that take you? How many mistakes you made during that time? How many people you had to network with? How many conversations did you, did you have? How many rejections did you have to suffer before you actually got that client? And how many times you had to court your client or your potential client before they decided, okay, I'm going to sign a check to pay you X amount of dollars to do this to me. And how many people did you have to do that to in order for that six figures to actually cash up? Right? right. Because... As particularly for people who are surface-based entrepreneurs, people who are providing creative pieces, um, and you're not selling like some sort of car, or some sort of house, or some sort of expensive good, I need to know that you are who you say you are. So if you can provide me with at least something that makes sense, I'm, I'm not saying that you have to show me proof that you did it for somebody else. If you can show me that you did it for yourself, at the very least. Or if at the very least your method makes sense, or you're willing to show me with no skin in the game on my part, I could just sit here and absorb. And let me take this slowly. And if, if you prove yourself in a little bit over time, over time, over time, and build up that trust, yeah. But I really don't believe that six figures comes in a short space of time because no matter what you do, you could never circumvent the process of growth. And you, you would never go from making 600 bucks, 1,000 bucks, to making 100,000 bucks and not, not, that not affect you mentally. You must, must, must develop mentally in order for you to be able to even conceptualize making that level of money because it's just a natural process. You have to go through it. Right. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but I just wanted to hear someone, you know, who has like a marketing background because I know it takes a lot to put into you know, your plan and, you know, just what you're selling, what your desires are, what you're doing. It's not, you know, how can you duplicate that by following what somebody else did for their thing, which yeah, is yeah. totally different from your thing, you know? Exactly. Because your personality is not the same. Your business model might not be the same. Your customer base might not be the same. Things, things are so different, you know? Exactly. So, so what do you think is the biggest mistake people make when marketing and branding themselves as a business or even a product? 
The biggest mistake, I would say lack of consistency is one. And I know I've experienced this as well myself. Burnout, sometimes we experience burnout, particularly if we are a smaller business and we have to do a lot of different things to make, to make the entire machine work. We do experience burnout, so I would say lack of consistency. I'd say a lot of people jump into marketing, and this usually is some more inexperienced people. They jump into marketing without having a clear understanding of themselves. I, I think a lot of people suffer from identity crisis, and they don't even know their own brand. So they would think, they would think that they need to, okay, I need to get a website, and I need to do this, and I need to do that. But before you go and try to acquire all these fancy assets, who exactly are you and why should I even be interested in what you have to sell to, sell to anybody? You know, what, what, is, what is that messaging and what is that promise and what is that customer experience that I could expect coming from you, right? You might have something in your head that you might think is like amazing for the market, but if you don't have, um, if you have never gotten any sort of confirmation from the market that this is something that they want, what are you doing? So a lot of people also, so another mistake is that a lot of people don't do their research. They don't even understand their market. So they would think, okay, this would be a great, oh my gosh, a great invention or a great book or a great this or a great that. So I'll give you an example. Recently, I got somebody reached out to me because they wanted some PR on a book. And I said, no problem. So I checked out the book. And when I checked the title of the book, the book was about life lessons. So my first question was life lessons for who? So they said, well... So I kind of had to walk them through and help them figure out. I said, well, first of all, the title of this book is so vague. I don't even know who this book is appealing to. Who would buy this book? Who would be interested in this book? I had to go down a particular path and show them when you are creating a product, you need to first think about who needs this product, where is the pain point, or what problem am I solving with this product? It's great that you want to write a memoir and you know, put down your story so people to read, but how is that going to benefit me at the end of the day as the consumer? So I think a lot of people head into things without any research, which in effect um, makes their whole, could make their whole plan null and void. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that example. So what do you think about entering oversaturated markets? Like for me personally, I have a lash line and a makeup brand. And I know that's a very oversaturated business. Do you think it's it's possible to still stand out even though there are so many people doing the same thing? I absolutely think it's possible from a brand point of view and you you just have to innovate on what already exists. And innovation could be anything. Innovation doesn't have to be the product. Innovation could be the mode of delivery. Innovation could be the, the way that you speak and engage with people. Innovation could be the relationship you have with your fans. Innovation could be anything. So even if a market is saturated, Right. I mean, if these if these Chinese brands that produce phones would think, oh my God, everybody buy, bought an iPhone or Samsung, these other brands that are coming up would never have a place in the market. But I think there's always a market, as long as you have um, a need. And I'd say this: a, a lot of times when we develop ideas for businesses, usually we are our first customer because we would have developed something based on a need that we had. And you just weren't able to find it anywhere. Because if something was, if the solution was there, you just go buy it. But sometimes you develop things where you realize, you know, I just want to get this. And where could I find this product uh, or this service? And then you kind of develop that. And usually if, usually, now of course, go and do your research. But usually if there's one person who needs it, there may be others who might be interested as well. So um, that's, that would be my piece of advice on that (laughs) well thank you so let's talk about the brand print which is your book the how-to guide to growing your side hustle into a profitable business with personal branding why did you decide to write this book i decided to write this book because for a long time i had been blogging and putting on different pieces and just releasing content in very short forms and uh, after doing that sometimes because while doing all of those things, I was still very much in the job hunt, looking for an opportunity, looking for a job. And then sometimes my writing would be a bit staccato. So I would write and then I wouldn't write for about a month. And then people would meet me in places and ask me, well, yeah, well, how come we don't see anything from you? How come we didn't see anything from you last month? We've been looking for things from you. You know, your, your blogging is really helpful and we really look forward to it. And at that point, I was like, okay, and you need to get it together. So I actually started putting the book together 
But because, again, but because I didn't have the growth, the experience, I couldn't finish it. And then two years later, because I started in 2017, so that's three years later, I decided, okay, I got, a, I got myself a mentor, and she said, you have a book? So I said, no, I have one in my head. She said, uh -huh, you need to write that book? So I said, all right, it's time. It's time because I know that there, first of all, there's no book like this on the market written for written in Trinidad and Tobago. So I only very least my audience locally will have something. Um, and the way I wrote this book took into account all of the pieces that I mentioned before, from confidence to content and communication. You know, usually when books are written, they either deal with they deal with one, they deal with confidence, or they deal with content, or they deal with um, maybe communication tactics. But what I try to do is I try to give a bit of all because they they need to come together in a bit of a triad, so to speak, in order for you to be able to master yourself as an individual because you can't go out there teaching anybody anything when you haven't mastered yourself, mastered your own confidence, mastered your own craft in order to share it with others. You need to be a master before you could even think about doing something like that. So I wrote this book because I wanted to give people the opportunity to understand that branding is it's simpler than you think it is. You just need to understand the steps and follow the steps in the sequence that they need to be followed. And you will succeed. Just take your time, do your thing, and enjoy, trust and enjoy the process. Yeah, I like that you said that. Um, because I, I tend to hear people, what it seems like is now, like everybody does the buzz, the buzzword or the buzz phrase. They kind of push mm -hmm. their um, stuff in that direction. So the yeah. buzz phrase is inspiration, right? So everybody's mm -hmm. doing something to inspire somebody. But then mm -hmm. I look at some of these people and I'm like, are you inspired? Or, you know, <laughs> like you want to inspire somebody, but are you inspired? Are you inspiring? Like, how can yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I love that you said that you know, you have to kind of master something before you can really sit down and say you're going to share it and teach it to other people. For sure. For yeah. sure. So let's see. What is the one thing you want your readers to get from your book when they're done reading? If they don't take anything else from it, what is the one message that you hope they, they receive? I, I, hope th I hope that they understand that the power lies within them. And they don't need anybody's permission to feel good about themselves. They have permission because they need to give it to themselves. I hope that they understand that any decision that they make or any outcome in their life is a direct result of them taking action and deciding that it will be that. And there's nobody that can get in their way if they decide that that is going to be the outcome for them. The power is in their hands. Mm, that's a great message. And that's yeah. a great segue into my next question, <laughs> which yeah. is, what is the biggest risk you have taken professionally? Ooh, uh, the biggest risk I took professionally, I could think about is when I left my, my very good, good cushy corporate job in 2015, I went back to school full time. Um, I went back to school, I got a scholarship opportunity, and I went to school because I really wanted to live abroad. And I went to England, it was great. And then when I came back, I never got a job. And that was four years ago. So the process of building my brand really was super, truly organic because I used my brand, or I was trying to use my brand to get my way into another job. But it didn't really turn out that way. It turned out, I realized that I was too large for the corporate environment. And I think a lot of corporates recognize that too. So. The interviews would always go really well, but then I would never actually land the job. And they would tell me, you know, it was really, really, really good, but, you know, I decided to go in another direction. And after a while, I, I got to it, as I said, and I, I would shop my CV around, and, and these recruiters would be like, well, this is a very, very good CV. I don't understand. And then we would talk about it, and then they said, well, you know, your personality is very, very strong. I'm not sure if people could take that. And I, I, I got to realize that perhaps what I was trying to do really wasn't the direction I was supposed to go in. And I, I suppose it was divine redirection. So I had to develop my brand and I had to, as much as long as I, as I continue to put myself out there, it started to turn into other people asking me questions. Well, how this and how that, and how do you write and how do you keep so positive and how do you keep inspired? And, 
and and it just evolved into that so as much as i took that risk the risk needed to happen in order to get me where i am now yeah i love how that happens that's that's yeah. how you can always know when you're on the right track you know things just start to happen that yeah kind of unfolds so have you ever made a bad first impression and if you have how did you rectify the situation i i, I i'm sure i have i'm sure i have <laughs> I'm sure I have, but I'm not sure I, I, I cared quite enough to rectify anything. <laughs> um, if I did, <laughs> Cause, because, you know, because maybe I'm just, you know, maybe I have a big ego, but <clears throat> I'm sure I've made a bad impression on people, but I don't think I've ever cared enough to go back and fix anything. Um, if people truly knew me and understood me, and if they, if they, were, if they followed me, they would know that an impression that they may have had because I, 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 I try my best to try to make people feel comfortable um, because naturally as as um, a personal brand expert, what I, what I want for people is for them to feel a certain sense of vulnerability when they're with me because you need to open up. You need to open up and be honest uh, honest with yourself about the things that you aren't doing and the things that are blocking. Essentially, you are blocking your own blessing. You're blocking your, and you're in your own way. So you have to be vulnerable enough to open up. And... Um, Sometimes, you know, sometimes my enthusiasm could be interpreted as other things, but it is what it is. Right. <laughs> and, and, um, oh, I don't know, maybe, maybe I did, and, but I don't care too much. You know, the people <laughs> who matter uh, appreciate um, my energy. Okay. So what still amazes you? Like, let's say with clients or just professionally like what is one thing that you're still amazed by that maybe people don't get or that you're still seeing or you know what am i amazed by um i am uh, i am amazed uh, no this may take a this may not be what you're looking for this may be a typical answer but i am truly amazed by people who are um, angry, upset, or jealous of those who work hard for the things that they have. Mm. Those things really do kind of shock me because when I sit and and I think about it, and I, and I acknowledge that somebody would have worked hard for the things that they have. You wouldn't see their process. Their process is like an iceberg, right? So they have all that thing under the surface. All the late nights when their phone is off and they're off of social media, you don't know what they're doing. And when they're able to produce something on the front end, and there are people who sit around and try to find ways to bring that down. I'm usually amazed by that because I'm thinking, wow, this person feels so empty on the inside. And the only way that they could, st the only way they could stand tall is when other people are lying flat on the ground because they really can't elevate anywhere. And uh, it amazes me that they didn't think that they should actually probably do something productive and they could get there too. Mm -hmm. uh, and if they were to take that same energy and funnel it into something more positive, they can actually experience growth just like the people that they're looking at. But because their energy is so heavy and so negative, they will never go anywhere. So I think I'm always a little amazed by that. I'm, a, I'm a, always amazed by people who are, who are envious of those who have less yeah. than them. Yeah. And they have the capacity to do a whole lot more. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So share three things someone with a new business should know before they start a marketing campaign. They should know their audience through and through. They should know what the audience wants, understand their pains thoroughly, understand the thing that they are selling. And most times the thing that they're selling isn't the thing. What they're selling is the outcome and the feeling of, the feeling of satisfaction that the person is going to get. And they should know their capacity to deliver that thing. So a lot of people promise things and they can't deliver. Mm. So I would say be mindful of what you are promising people. Be, mi be mindful because your reputation is tied up in that. Be very, very clear about who your audience is. The worst thing is to market to an audience and then really and truly they are not the ones that you should be talking to. And be sure that you understand that what you are selling isn't what you are selling. What you are selling is the outcome. What you are selling is the feeling of satisfaction, peace, peace of mind that the consumer will eventually feel once they engage with your product, buy it, use it, apply it to their lives. Nice. 
Do you feel that you are doing purpose-driven work? And if so, what part of it serves? Oh, for sure. Oh my gosh, purpose-driven work is, I think that's at the heart of what I do. Uh, as a matter of fact, in the brand print, one of the very, very first questions is why? Why, why the brand print and also you understanding your why and understanding your purpose. So I, I operate by those very same principles and I know my purpose is ready to help people achieve theirs. And in order for people to achieve theirs, they must be 100% convinced that they are able and they are capable to be able to do that. So in serving that purpose, when you go out and you achieve yours, you are not just a better person for you, you're a better person for your family, you're a better person if you have kids, for your kids, you're a better person for the legacy you want to leave behind. So so you, when you build you, you aren't just building you, you're already building the legacy that, you leave, that you're going to leave for the people who are going to come after you. Because if you take time and build business, you earn money, you're able to put food on the table for your family, you're able to probably send your kids to school, and you're able to leave some sort of nest egg for them, and they're able to benefit from the fact why, because you believed. And you knew very well what you were capable of, and you didn't let anything stop you. And my purpose is to find people like that and help them really get the publicity, the visibility, and to build with the confidence that they deserve. Okay. So on this podcast, I always ask my guests to share an oh hell no moment that they have had along their journey. And these moments are frequent because we have oh hell no moments a lot. An oh hell no <laughs> moment is just a moment of disbelief. You know, it could be a positive moment. It could be a negative moment. But in that moment, you're like, oh hell no. So mm -hmm. share a moment that has taught you something that you carry with you every day because it was something you learned from that experience or something that changed your perspective on something. Well, my most recent oh hell no moment was the last job I had when uh, in the back of my mind I knew this place wasn't the environment for me, but I went anyway because a girl had some bills to pay, right? Mm -hmm. So I went to a meeting and we had, I was part of the marketing team and the owner of the company had a meeting with us um, because the owner is also the, the chairperson. And he invited some external guests, some external suppliers. And in, before the meeting could start, when the entire marketing team assembled, he pointed to me and said, you, you can leave. And I looked around, and I, so I looked behind me, like, you know, who's, who's he talking to? And he's like, yes, no, you can leave. I mean, he, he basically kicked me out of the meeting in front of everybody. Oh my God. And I was, I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> that, I was like, oh, hell no, this man did not just do that. I was so upset. Um, and I, the worst part is I left my laptop in the meeting. So when I got back to my desk, I had nothing to do. So I left. I went and I bought a couple of shoes. I walked around the city. Uh, when I came back, I was hella pissed off. So I told um, the acting manager of the department at the time, and I said, this is, that was totally ridiculous and disrespectful and uncalled for. And she said, I know, I know. I told him he should have done better. I said, let me tell you something. I said, from this point on, you will not get any work out of me. My time here is short. And rest assured, I will be coming, coming to work here just to chill. And so said, so done. And I left a few months after that. And now that, that company is still, you know, where they were, no, which is nowhere. And I have moved on to write my book, to have my, to have my agency, and to impact people. So I, I definitely, um, that was a moment where I realized that corporate was not for me anymore because the environment that we, we, we frequently end up in, and I don't know if this is this a Caribbean thing or you know persons in the US and other developed countries could experience it, but there are lots of people who are very insecure in their positions mm -hmm. as leaders. And if somebody who comes in and they suspect that this person will challenge them and they will ask them questions, when in truth and in fact, those challenges aren't because we want to tear you down, it's because we want to make you better. Um, they will be afraid to even engage in, in a conversation with those people. And those are the environments of people who have plans to grow and grow immensely. You need to plant yourself in an environment where the soil is fertile. And I promise myself I will never go into an environment where my gut is telling me this place is not for you. 
even if it's a contract that would that's worth like a lot of money if something is off kilter i will definitely ask around ask give it a second thought get a second opinion it will not be sign up smile and sign and just jump in head first for sure Mm. For sure. I love that. That is a great oh hell no moment and a great mm. lesson. It yeah. was such a pleasure having you on the podcast. Please tell us where we can connect with you, where we can buy your book. Give us all the details. All right. Okay. So you, my book is available, the Kindle version available on Amazon. Right. If you're in the U.S. and you want to get it right now, you can get it on Amazon. You can get a paperback version there as well. Um, as soon as the Corona. Corona is eased up and they open up the delivery ways. Um, you can actually get it. You can get it from my website as well, which is www.thebrandprintbook.com. So the audio book is available there as well. So you can get it there. And the paperback is also available there as well. Um, and for, to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram at, at jvbranding. You can connect with me on LinkedIn at Jamila Bannister. And my page on Facebook is Bannister branding and i would love to have all of you follow me oh and i also have my company page j banister branding ltd on instagram so feel free to connect with me in any of those places amazing The Home Depot's number one in outdoor power. But when it comes to cordless power, we also pack quite a punch. With the latest mowers, blowers, trimmers, and more. From exclusive brands like Ryobi, DeWalt, Ego, Milwaukee, and Makita. Unleashing the power of gas with all the convenience of cordless. The best names in cordless power. Order online for easy pickup or delivery. Only from The Home Depot. How doers get more done. U.S. only. You've probably heard about FanDuel Sportsbook, America's number one sports betting app. But here's something you may not know. FanDuel has a standalone casino app called Betfair Casino. With Betfair Casino, you can play real casino games to win real cash right from your phone. Best of all, you can play your first 24 hours risk-free and up to $200 cash back in site credit if you lose. Download the Betfair Casino app or visit FanDuel.com slash Pandora. 21 plus and present in New Jersey. Must have not previously made any real money wagers at Betfair Casino. Refund issued as non-withdrawable site credit. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER.